Now, deep pressure sores originate in deep tissues in the body and tend to work up towards the surface. Because remember, just as the surface of the body can come under pressure, the pressure can be transmitted into deeper structures as well. And they need their blood supply just as much as the skin does. So pressure sores can start in deep tissues and work up to the surface. And in the same way, they can start in superficial tissues and work down. So pressure sores may be superficial or deep. So superficial or deep pressure sores. Superficial sores begin with necrosis in the skin, in the epidermis on the very top layer of the skin, and may develop downwards if the pressure is not relieved. Of course, the idea is that we would recognise this early and relieve the pressure so that this does not occur. Whereas deep pressure sores, by contrast, originate in deep tissues, often overlying bones, and spread upwards towards the skin surface. So very often, these ones cause discoloration, but these might be harder to detect. And sometimes the first you know about it is that the pressure sore, the necrosed tissue, is coming up towards the surface of the body. So just because the skin doesn't look red doesn't mean to say that a deep pressure sore is not forming. We must assume that pressure sores can be forming and relieve pressure on all parts of the body. So just to review, pressure sores start as an area of redness over the developing sore very often. And sometimes, especially if it's a deep pressure sore, even though there's not a lot of discoloration, a lump may be palpable. You might be able to feel that there's something wrong in the underlying tissue. And of course, if we can recognise pressure sore formation early, diagnosis at this stage, we can stop them developing. Because obviously prevention is far better than treating them. So we can sometimes tell that deep pressure sores are developing by an area of redness and a possible lump. But if it's not diagnosed at this stage and the sore goes on to develop, the skin usually becomes blackened due to necrosis, and then the cavity opens up underneath that, revealing the deep pressure sore. So here's a, a superficial pressure sore. Let's just orientate ourselves first of all to this diagram. Top layer of the skin here, the epidermis, then the dermis of the skin. Then the subcutaneous tissue, connective tissue and fatty tissue. Then muscle, then the periosteum of the bone, then the bone itself. So this pressure sore is probably formed because of pressure between the surface, something pressing down on the surface here, and the bone underneath. And we can see in this superficial pressure sore that there is ulcer formation affecting the skin and the subcutaneous tissue, but not going down as deeply as the muscle layer. So a superficial pressure sore, which has originated in the uh, skin and worked downwards into deeper tissues. Of course, if this is left and the pressure continues, deeper tissues will be affected, and this can develop into a deep pressure sore given time. But at the moment, it's a superficial pressure sore. So deep pressure sore, same tissues again, skin, subcutaneous, uh, muscle, periosteum, bone. Deep pressure sore, again, caused by the combination of pressure from above here and the uh, bone underneath. But this time the pressure sore has originated in the deeper tissues overlying the bone. And for a while, of course, the skin would be intact. But has gradually worked up, breaking its way out of the skin, revealing the ulcer, with a typical uh, necrosed appearance, most commonly, on the surface. So deep pressure sore originating in deeper tissues above the bone, working up the way. Now one important point to remember is the appearance of the pressure sore from the surface does not necessarily indicate the size of the pressure sore in total. Very often you can get sinus-shaped sores, or very often flaps, the, the, the sore flaps underneath the skin. So here's a sinus-shaped pressure sore. I think you can see, if you're looking at this from the top here, it would look quite small. You'd only see this narrow opening. But underneath, it opens out, 
and, and more tissues are, are, are involved. And this is very important for treatment because very often this would need to be uh, packed with something. And um, <clears throat> you don't want areas left that aren't packed because they can become anaerobic. So sinus shape pressure sores, looking small at the top, but developing out to affect larger areas underneath. Again, caused by the pressure from the top and the resistance of the bone underneath, necrosing tissues. Now to aid our prevention of pressure sores, it's helpful if we know how they're formed. And there's two groups of forces that cause pressure sores. One is pressure and the other is shearing. So pressure forces and shearing forces. Let's look what we mean by pressure sores, pressure, pressure forces and then shearing forces. So first of all, mechanism of formation. Two factors involved the pressure and shearing forces. Let's look at what we mean by pressure first of all. This diagram is illustrating pressure points in a patient on his or her side. Now a pressure point, the points describe the points in the body where most of the pressure generated by the weight of the body is transmitted through to the floor that the person is lying on, or the surface that the person is lying on. So here's the surface that they're lying on. And these are the points of maximum pressure. And as we've said before, it's where the bones are pressing through the tissues between the bones and the surface of the body. So these are pressure points. And we can see that here, that the uh, heel bones, there's going to be pressure, the knee bones. And as well as between the knee bones and the surface, between the two knees themselves if they're pressed together, that's a pressure point here. Top of the femur, as we saw on the diagram of the isolated femur, the hip, the side of the ribs, the elbow, the side of the head as well. So pressure points in a patient on the side. And what you can do is try lying still on a hard surface yourself for 10-15 minutes and see how sore you get and you'll find it, it's quite sore reasonably quickly if you're lying on a hard wooden surface because the pressure points are starting to develop into pressure sores. So an example showing pressure points. Now the solution to this problem, as, as we've mentioned, is regular turning of patients. But in addition, we want to even out the forces generated by the weight of the body over the surface that the patient is lying on as much as possible. So here we see that this surface is nicely shaped to the patient's body. So the, this part of the body will probably be transmitting about as much weight as this bit, as this bit, as this bit. So in other words, the weight of the body is equally distributed over the surface of the body. It's not being transmitted through to the underlying surface over particular points. The weight is the same, of course, because of the gravity and the weight of the patient. But the pressure on any point is less because the pressure is now more evenly distributed. Now let's explain what we mean by shearing forces. But before we do that, I think you can see that these red triangles here indicate areas of pressure. So this is pressure here, 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 here and here on the surface the patient is lying on. But I'm not primarily interested in that in this diagram. What I want to try and do is explain what we mean by shearing forces. Now this patient <coughs> will tend to slump down the bed in this direction. It will tend to slump down here like this. That's what this arrow is indicating. The patient will tend to slither down the bed. So they're no longer sitting, they're sort of lying down in the bed. So they tend to slide down because of the weight and the gravity. But the patient's skin is adherent to the surface that the patient is lying on and that tends to hold it in place. So what tends to happen is that the superficial tissues are held in place whereas the deeper tissues with the bones in tend to slide down. So what you end up getting is shearing forces like this as the patient slides down the bed. <coughs> 